Right folks, now I'm going to do this fantastic fox picture. This has been requested a few times and uh, I thought about time I actually did it. It's going to be a little different. Normally I do just the head and shoulders, but this time I'm going to do full body. It's a collection of two or three different pictures, so I, I can't show you one particular one. But it gets the, um, the head is one, the body is another, the background is another, and I'm going to make up the foreground. But um, you're going to see it as one picture, and I think it's going to look fantastic. What I've also done here is I've uh, um, put a head on with a mouth, which is going to be great. I love putting mouths in. That's one of my favourite things. I know uh, it's more difficult, but it really does set the whole thing alive. And I think, as you can see from the just the drawing here, it's going to look great. So let's go on with it. Now I'm going to start with the ears as usual. Put some white in. That's a solid white around there. Now in here we've also got white, but this is a little bit more subdued. So what I do with that is I don't put the, it's quite so much pressure on. I'm going to be bringing some grey in there in the tick. Okay, now on the other side, might as well do two at the same time. I may have to get rid of that line around there, that's a little bit strong. Now this is a this is a funny old ear this, but the reason I like it, it's it's much more interesting than the usual. There's little bits of dark colours and rusty colours and and the hair in the ear is a little different too. Now I don't have to worry too much about the lines, you can see how they are in, um, showing through the white. You don't have to worry too much because it's going to have a lot of dark in there. About that. Okay, that's great. Now we've also got here, which is a, a little bit of a problem, not quite sure today. I think I'm going to use ivory. We've also got some light in the hair. And again, I don't have to worry about that line because that's going to eventually be quite dark. I want to put some, you know why I do this, this is that where I, I call them stopping points. And also I'll we'll just have a little bit of white in there. I'm just, just preempting what I'm going to be doing you know, a little later on. We don't want a lot of it, but you see now, doing that, you see solid here, very light there. That means that the colour I'm going to put on, which is probably going to be a 186, this is a rusty colour. Uh, will register better. If you put too much colour on, uh, then you're going to end up with that 186, or whatever colour I decide to use there, uh, being wishy-washy. That's not what I want. And I want a little bit of white in here, in the same token. It just gives me an overall picture if I do this. And I've got a little bit of coming in there. Now, I do feel that I've got to get rid of some of this I put it on because I like to draw a picture in and see how it's going to look, but then I don't want to take it all off, I just want to take a little bit off. But when the when it's a little too strong, it can interfere with the white. Don't worry about the back there, that's going to be dark. That'll be alright. If I have to, I'll rub more off, but I think that would be fine. I'll just put just re place that white there. There. Now I'm going to put some dark. I'm going to put some dark colours on here. Now what I'm going to do here, this is going to be black. I'm just going to put a little bit of grey. This is two double three. I've decided to use. The reason I'm using two double three two thirty is because we've got a kind of a bluey hue to the grey areas, as opposed to this two seven three. I would normally use. It got a warmer colour, and that goes right up there, just just a tip. There's none on that side. Now that establishes for me the, um, you know, the that, that bit of extra dark. There's a little bit there too. 
and we'll be putting black on that eventually but not for a while. Now in here we've got a slightly different problem, we've got a, a graduation. So I'm going to put in here the 230 to start with and that will, that will actually go and mix with the white. I'm going to put a bit more white in there. This looks good, when you get it right this looks really nice. Uh, this graduation, it, it kind of falls into the air and gives you a three dimensional effect. Uh, I think that's going to be quite attractive. Now we get to there and this is very dark. So what we do with that is we, oops, not that one, we use the dark grey, 233. And that can be faded into or graduated into the 230. And then we get that beginning of the graduation. It's going to be very dark in here eventually. Now having done that, we can then bring the grey back into the white. See? You can always put the white back on again, but what we want to do is to give a bit of a, more of a tone to that white in there. That looks good. Always be tentative when you do anything like this. And the other colour that we can see in there is 182. And that mixes with the grey really well. So we now get a kind of ochre look to that. That's nice. like it. Okay, now I'm going to put a bit of ivory on the edges of here. Because although it, I've got white in there, really, it, it's kind of cr more creamy. Well, that's good. Now, we've now got some white here. I think I'm going to leave this here alone at the moment because I'm playing with this. It's a good idea just to test it out on one. Now, I'm going to style use the 186 if I can find it. 186. Now, I've got the wrong colour there. Yeah, it's 186. I'm going to put a little bit of 186 in. I'm going to put it very lightly because I'm not totally convinced it's the right colour for the fox. Although having put it on there, I think it is. Now what we're going to do with that is something I don't know whether you've seen me do this before. Well, because we've got the colour shapers that we never had when I did the original fox that I produced in the pack. We can now use a colour shaper just to blend it in. And what it does, you see, it mixes with the white. Actually, that gives me exactly the colour I'm looking for. Now, that's good news. A little bit of white on there. Actually, um, I'm going to be a bit fussy here because I think that that line that I've got is a little bit too strong. It's all right up here. Now, we just... just bring it back a little bit because I wanted a little bit on the edge of that I wanted it to be lighter so we put that's lovely okay now we can also put the 186 back in again and so what I've done basically is, is put a little bit of white a little bit of 186 in blended it with the blender and we've now got a really attractive looking tone in there Good. That's so good, and I think what we'll do, we'll do it down here too. A bit of white. It's important to get the colour mix right. I thought I'd be better put it on raw paper, but I didn't want to then. Just a little bit there. Now let's see how that works again. Whenever you start off a picture like this, it's a little bit of experimentation to see how the colours are blending together and that looks very good. Okay, let's, um, let's move on. We've got to put a little bit more strength in now. So what I'll do is I'm going to use 187. Now 187 is a little stronger than the 186. It's the same kind of tone, but it will get a little bit more. You see the difference? And I'm going to put that in there and I'll put that up here too. So we're using 186 really as our foundation colour and then we're going to use 187. Not, it's quite rare in fact that I use in fact two colours 
the two covers together, but in this case it's going to work. A little bit of white in there before we put too much of the depth in. And now 187 and 182 together will create the effect that I'm looking for there. Good. Excellent. We've got to darken that now before we go on. So I'm going to use then, I think I'm going to use uh, a 175. I can find it. Yes, I can. I was going to use, the original idea was 181, but the problem I think with that is going to, it's going to be too blue, and I want this to be slightly more earthy. Let's go. Now this is going to be really interesting for you to see. A little bit down here. And see now the warm colour goes onto the warm colour there, which looks good, but it, it's a little bit fierce. What we do there is we use um, 283. There it is, 283. Because 283 is kind of a buffer zone between those two colours. You could say, or could ask me, why don't you use the dark brown one double seven? And you could do. But because I'm using this one, which is the 187, 187 and 283 go together really well. Now that's fine. A little bit more of my 175. Now this time we then go into here. I want to separate this area here. Now, you need a little bit of 175 in there. Bring it up. Very, very tense. Don't press hard. Whatever you do now, you, you, if you press hard, you're, you're not going to get it off. Even if you use an eraser, you'd find it difficult to get off. And anyway, you take all those other colours off as well. So you've got to be very, very careful with this. But that is now looking good. In the old days, what I would have done here is I would have used a, a, a bit of a white pencil, probably, to actually go over that. But we don't have to now, because we've got the colour shapers, we can actually use them. And very, very carefully blend this in. Remember, we can put the darker colour on if we want it. We can put the lighter colours on if we want it. I'm going to do halfway and stop because I want to sh show you how this works. I do the more difficult bit, which is the bottom, and you can see how it's all going to finish up. And then we'll, then we'll um, do the top now, just there. This is where we fuse those two colours together, or three colours really: white, two thirty, and two double three, and then we put a little bit of. 175 in. Oh, I went right up, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Now you see how it's beginning to look. Now what we do now is we can now bring our colours back again. It's amazing how you can you can put the colour back into it. But what you've got is that lovely fusion of colours underneath which look really, really nice. And here. Uh, <coughs> ideally, you know, I could do with a sharper white. But um, I haven't got one, so I'll have to put up with it. But I will actually sharpen my white in a minute, and, and I'll just go back over it again. But that's what we're looking for. Now here we want that to be white, it's on the edge, and then fuse it back in. So we don't want to make it too light back there. And then with our, our 175, I don't think we need anything darker than that. We can then bring that back, just to put in 
a little strong strength like that. I'm going to use, I'm going to use the that better. Don't want that to be too strong in there. Lovely. Okay, let me let me sharpen the white, and then we'll finish that off, and then basically that is done. Okay, here we go now. Let's just do the same here. Great. Use the white. I've got a nice sharp white now, so I can now bring, you can see the difference that makes. Astonishing. And just a little bit more strength. We can just bring just a little bit, play with it a little so that you get a better design to it. That looks great. And because what we can do now, I'm going to just turn this around because I'm going to show you how we can actually push. Now this is, what I do here is I'm going that way away from me, which is easier for me to just pick those little final little hairs in. Now you can think well am I looking at the picture now? No I'm not because once you get to this stage it's down to you to really just put the final little touches in there. Look at that. That looks stunning doesn't it? Gosh folks. Now just what will make this really really nice is if we were to put a little bit of black here. Now I'm, I'm using only two colours here. I've used the two double three and the black because that gives me a richer colour. If I put too many colours underneath it, it wouldn't. Now we go to there, but now we've got a slightly tricky problem. We have done the black there. There we are. Because now we've got the colour, the um, 186 colour and the black hitting each other. That can't work. So what we do is something very, very, let me come very close to this and show you how we get over that problem. What we're going to do is to stop that black there from being too harsh. And the only way you can do it is to graduate it tonally into the colour beneath. Now what I'm using is 283. And you see how... I've used the black and I've used the 283 kind of like a blender really to bring that back and that can come back I might as well put a little bit down here because I want that to have a slight edge to it okay that's great now we go back in with the uh, use the 187 this was the color the, the stronger of the two colors 186187 and you do the same thing again but this time you, as you come into the tone of the orangey the grey colour you then filter it back in you just got to squiggle it around until it looks right and now you can see we have a transition which is stunning and that's it